All right, percussion, this is the mallet help video. Hey. Sorry, I have to do it this way so that you guys can see the mallet instrument itself. So I'm looking at my music right here. Booyah, Dragon Slayer on the mallet part. So right now I'm playing on a vibraphone and uh, this will just give you an idea. If you're looking at the, the digital piano, so we've got the white keys down here and the black keys will be up here. All right, so that's what we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna put some stickers on the keys to help you guys. And actually, there's already stickers on this instrument, boom. So if you're looking here, on our music, <clears throat> the first note that we have is a D. And if you want, ever need to locate the D, it's between the two black keys in the piano or the two paired on the top deck of the vibraphone, bells, or any other mallet instrument, okay? The other thing I want you guys to look at is if you're looking at your music, notice here, there's a little flat. That's gonna tell us that anything that's on that center line, the B or any other B is gonna be a flat. So if we look at our instrument here, all the keys down here are the natural notes. All the keys up here are the flat or sharp. So we know that the B flat is the one we're gonna play, not the B natural. B flat, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, everything else is natural, so all other notes are gonna be in the bottom. Here we go, so we're gonna play from the beginning. We're gonna play the first three measures. So if you look here, my first note is a D, a D, E, because it's on the bottom line, and then F, okay? So if you're looking at your music, now we're gonna play this together. So my D is here, my E is here, and my F is here. One, two, three, right next to each other. So here I go, get set. One, two, ready, go. D, rest, rest. D, E, E, rest. E, F, F, F. That's the first three measures. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the next couple measures. Looking at the music, right here I've got my G, because it's on the second line, E again, and then that low note with the ledger line through it, that is a C. So let's just play measure four. So measure four, we're gonna start at G, which is right here, because remember the music alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G is gonna be the next note. So if my F starts right before the three keys at the top, my G is gonna be right next to it, all right? So my first note is G, and then I'm gonna to skip to E, and then I'm gonna to go to the C. So my G is longer because it's a half note. One, two, here I go. G, E, C, okay? Next measures, we got some half notes. So right here, we got a D, F, E, G. All right, so let's play those next measures. So right at measure five, we're gonna start with our D, one, two, here I go. D, F, E, G. Okay. And then, looking at the rest of this part up to measure 10, I've got my D, F, F, E, E, G, G, D. All right, so I'm going to play all those three measures, seven to nine. Here I go, starting with my D. One, two, here I go. D. Sorry, D. Let me try that again. It's hard to look at the camera, make sure I get this, play the vibraphone, and look at the music. All right, let me try this again. Seven. One, two, here I go. D. Okay. Let's do from all the way from the beginning. So I'm going to count us off. We're going to play from the very beginning all the way to the rest. All right, here we go. Get set. And here we go, starting with our Ds. I'm gonna count us off and I'll count the rest. Here we go, from the beginning. One, two, ready, go. Two, three. Rest. Rest. Four, done. 
So that's the beginning of the song. Now all of these notes are the same for the whole song. So if you look later in the piece, you're just using all the notes we already went over in different patterns. So if you can identify where they are on the keyboard, the mallet instrument, you can play this song. All right, so get started on this. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey, percussion. I'm gonna be doing and working on Dragon Slayer on the snare part, if you wanna work on the snare part. So, snare, rhythms, and all that good stuff. So the first thing you wanna make sure is if you have a snare drum, that your snares are off. And there's that little switch on the side. It creates that tom-tom drum, drum sound. If you don't have a snare drum and you're working on a pad, just know that if you were on a snare drum, you'd wanna turn it off. All right, so looking at our rhythms, the thing about snare drum versus the rest of the band is that generally you're gonna have different rhythms than everybody. Usually snare will have more complex rhythms than the rest of the band. So if you're looking at the snare part, you're gonna see on the top part of the line is the snare, on the bottom is the bass drum. So we're gonna focus on the snare part. It's indicated by SD, and that's what's at the very beginning. So looking at our notes, our rhythms per se, we've got some eighth notes in here. When we're counting eighth notes, we're gonna be going one and two and three and four and, and we're gonna try to keep them even. One and two and three and four. And. So if I stomp the beat, Okay, so one and two and three and four and. All right, if I hit on the snare, the best snare drummers are consistent with tempo. So take a look at the first two measures. We got quarter note, rest, rest, quarter note. Then we've got eighth notes, quarter note, eighth notes, quarter note. We would count that one, four, one and two, three and four. If we put it into time, it'd be one, four, one and two, three and four. If I play it on the drum, one, two, here I go. One, two, three. Okay? If I continue on, measure three, quarter, quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter. One, two, three and four. All right, the next measure, measure four, one, two, and three, and four, and one. One, two, measure four. One, two, and three, and four, and one. And I'm alternating my hands, right? I'm not going. I can technically do that, but you wanna alternate your hands just because it's gonna make it a little bit easier and you're getting practice using your hands. Also notice my, my sticks are not going crazy high. It is loud. I'm trying to not play super loud right now. But when you're playing, you always wanna move from your wrists. You're holding your sticks like this, pinch, wrap around. You should have about an inch or two below on the bottom. Most of the stick is at the top. And then when you play, you're gonna be playing towards the center top of the drum. So not directly in the center, but kind of off to the center. I like playing up towards the front or the top of the drum. So kind of like, if you're looking at the drum, from here, to the center, right in the middle. That's where I'm playing, okay? So I'm not hitting super hard and I'm using my wrists. I'm relaxed, I'm not, there's no tension. So let's go from the beginning all the way to measure five, all right? With that constant tempo, we're thinking about always staying consistent and the eighth notes fitting into that beat. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. the same thing. Another thing about snare is that you are going to have a lot of repetition. Consistency is what's difficult, is playing it the same way, the same tempo every single time. It's hard. So let's go from the beginning all the way to measure nine, because it's basically the same thing twice. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Two, three. What I like 
like to do when I'm playing the snare drum is I'm thinking those counts in my head. So you know how I talked about my crazy voice, Blanche? She's in my head when I'm counting. So this time I'm gonna do it one more time and I'm gonna count out loud. The great thing about snare and percussion is you can count out loud while you play. So here we go. One more time from the beginning. One, two, here I go. One, two, three. to the entire piece. All these rhythms are similar, and if you can understand the relation between the quarter note versus the eighth note, you'll be awesome. All right, let me know if you have any questions.